Hello everyone, welcome back to the shop. Tonight is another D&D night, which means that I'm gonna probably be building another battle map. Judging by your comments uh, from the last Ice Cave video that I posted, you wanna see a bit more of this type of stuff because it is similar to my work and the means that it is regarding fantasy and my life is pretty much just fantasy land. I collected this piece of styrofoam years ago and how can you not tell me this doesn't look like some type of coliseum or training ground for some you know, battle inspired guild or something like that. So I'm gonna be building a proper training grounds battle map and I'm really excited because I love to spoil my crew. And I hope that you might be inspired to kind of create something similar to yourself. I try to keep it simple. Ah, oh, let's get started. Allow me to give you some background. The reason that the party is climbing this treacherous Everest-like mountainside where they found that ice cave where they ran into frost giants and yetis is to reach the, uh, a monastery where one of my players, who is a monk, was trained and grew up. And they need these monk masters, their help for guidance and aid to continue on their quest and journey. Now, last episode with the ice cave, it was very easy to you know, just work with natural styrofoam because everything is, is white. But this is at the peak where everything's gonna be built with dark stone. It'll be almost like a fortress. Think last airbender meets, um, like meets Doctor Strange. We need to add Color first. Be sure that you're in a heavily ventilated area. I have my doors open and all that stuff. But what we're gonna do is just, you know, get some color on the inside just to begin. That didn't work very well. There we go. All right, we're back in time. Perfect. Now, as you can see, the styrofoam pits very similar looking like cobblestones that have been laid there centuries ago. Now, I want to add in icicles on this side because it needs to still feel cold. Okay, I just have a bit of acrylic white that I'm going to just begin painting in some icicles along the perimeter. Just add in that little extra flare. Ah yes, I can already feel the chill. Now, for this central area, I want it to feel like sand. You know, like they brought in sand for their training area for these monks. I don't have a, a yellow spray paint, but what I do have is a bit of acrylic kind of, kind of straw color. And I'm gonna give that a shot and see what happens. Okay, yeah, this is wonderful. Now I know what you're thinking. I, hey, I know what you're thinking. What's he doing wasting all of his time doing this stuff for? Hey, it's my lunch break right now. And you know what? I love to experiment because, and you know what? I'll tell you why. Because the second I'm asked to design a playground or something like of that nature, I'm ready to go. I have all of these wonderful and very fun ideas ready to go. You know what I mean? Like I. Like I've said a million times, I'm going to continue saying it. There's no such thing as wasted time. I'm experimenting. I'm learning as I go. There's, there's just so many wonderful things to learn. And you should never be made to feel guilty for experiments that you are conducting. And now I'm leaving a little bit of white because I wanted to feel like there's been snow kind of freshly fallen. Okay, now that we have our kind of snowy, sandy uh, fighting pit ready to go, I want to have like a central, like, kind of like central spot. Let's do that. Just going to scribe in a little mark. Okay, now that we have this sort of arena kind of built up at the base of here, I want to add in a lot more moving pieces, some battlements, almost like an obstacle course. Think wiped out or like Ninja Warrior or something like that. Well, I've drawn up a couple little notes that I think are going to be really cool. So as you can see, both of these sides are relatively unused and very open. Too boring. We don't like that. No, no. What we're going to have is kind of windmill driven 
obstacle course is that, you know, very much like uh, Siri in The Witcher has to like navigate through, very similar to that. Now to make a lot of these you know, moving parts work, I'm going to daisy chain. A couple of these funny, very inexpensive, very slow and strong motors, you can get it from Amazon, and I'm gonna utilize these to make things slowly move. All right, so for the next obstacle, I'm imagining these iron swinging pendulums that the monk is going to have to jump through and time everything out properly. So this is gonna be a lot of fun. So I'm gonna paint these kind of an iron black just to kind of, I don't know, create that immersion that we're looking for. So we're not looking for perfect. Perfect's kind of boring. It needs to look handmade. And also, I, I don't have the time to uh, really make it really nice, you know, like what I usually have to do for my metalwork, which is very liberating. It's liberating to just kind of slap something together really nice and quick. I'm just gonna, I just can't wait for the laughs, the moments of terror if the monk doesn't seem like they can do it. <laughs> it worked! All right, so we're getting super close. I believe this is all pretty much done uh, with the kind of twirling you know, beams of wood that will kind of try and knock you off of this, this balance beam. Uh, but now we're moving our way over here and this is getting there pretty darn close with this kind of eccentric wheel kind of contraption. What I'm gonna do next is kind of construct this like little paper sail that would be kind of powering the mechanism uh, with these kind of airbender types. Stuck my fingers to it. Ah, there we go. You see, these fun little details almost create little prompts for uh, the adventurers to interact with. You know, you never know. They might do some really cool, like, oh, I don't know, three musketeers on this counterweight, or you know how like they do in uh, the uh, parts of the Caribbean movies, where uh, you know that one will grab a hold of a counterweight or a rope or something, cut it, and then they go flying off to do something else. It's about creating those fun prompts. Oh, I cannot wait for this. Look at that. Oh, should we try it? I'm gonna plug these motors in and let's see what happens. All right, hold on to your butts. It's working! It's incredible! Oh, I love it! Okay, we're almost done. So I made these funny little kind of stump pedestals where the characters will have to jump through this swinging pendulum of danger. All right, so I'm gonna stick these kind of like this in between where, uh, you know, these like iron pendulums will be swinging. Okay, so the next thing is going to continue with our wooden beams that come across this stone wall to lead up to this. This is gonna be an obstacle course that will be difficult just because if they fall off, they have to start back over and they're all, they're all trying to get back to this ring. Meanwhile, these masters of the elements are going to try and stop them, making things difficult. You know, using wind to blow them off of the pedestals, using earth to, to you know, knock them off of their footing. This is gonna be so much fun to mess with the characters. So my idea with this is it's gonna gradually get more and more difficult as they're close together, but now they're gonna start getting further and further apart as time goes on. So that the kind of the acrobatics DC is going to slowly and gradually rise on each pedestal. Ooh. And with that, I believe all of the you know, the actual hardware is all done. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of paint to really set the illusion off. Okay, I'm gonna begin with a uh, kind of a little off-white that I created to give the illusion of this being like a sail material. All right, so I, f 
I mixed together pretty much every color I had to finally arrive at like a kind of a cardboard brown to touch up a few things. But yeah, I'm gonna continue to just kind of paint along and really just, I don't know, define our lines. Now, the reason I put so much intention into these funny, these absolutely silly builds is because I like to maintain skill hone, to, to hone my skills in model building so that when I, you know, when I inevitably am, you know, commissioned to build a, a really neat piece of work or something like that that requires a complex working model of what I want to build or what I'm commissioned to build, my chops are there. I got it all at my fingertips. I remember how to, to paint. I know how to, to build. And I don't know. I think it's very important to practice your skills, especially after honing them for a long time. It's good to challenge yourself every now and then and spend a little just time having fun, utilizing the skills that you've worked very hard to accumulate. Now it's true, this piece did take me a little bit longer than I planned to, which kind of ended up being about like a two hour lunch break. Don't tell my boss. But I'm so excited to unveil this tonight to my players and have them uh, run the gauntlet that the games begin.